morning. morning. Welcome to our uh, Unity Prayer Gathering. I'm Pastor Warren Harvey. I'm the pastor here at Ambassador and have really just provided the place for this gathering. My brothers uh, behind me have uh, organized much of this, but we're so thankful for you to come out and for us to gather as God's people to pray together. Uh, I'm not going to do much more of an introduction other than to say, please feel free to spread out when you want to be sensitive to practicing uh, distance between groups. Uh, we have more area over here. There's some shade back over here behind the cars. I think it's loud enough you can hear everything that's going on. So uh, we're glad to have you here with us. We're going to start with uh, some singing uh, and then uh, Pastor um, Willie Harris is going to come up and, and give us an introduction. But thanks for being here. We want to welcome our New, New Dimensions Fellowship Church. Uh, praise Ooh. man. Thank you. If you love the Lord, you're going to clap your hands all over the Lord.
based on what's going on in our culture and our nation today. So my prayer of lament will be based on Psalm 13. Psalm 13. Will you pray with me? How long, O Lord, will you forget us forever? How long will you hide your face from us? How long will we suffer from police brutality? How long before black lives matter to everyone? How long before all people of different ethnic groups are seen as made in the image of God? How long before all people, including people of color, are treated equally under the law? How long must we struggle with anguish in our souls and have sorrow in our hearts over the death of another black person? How long must we have sorrow in our hearts over the mistreatment of the poor and marginalized? How long shall racist people be exalted over us? Consider and answer us, O oh Lord, my God. Restore the light to our eyes, lest we sleep the sleep of death. Do not let the enemies of freedom and equality boast, saying, we have prevailed over them. Do not let them rejoice at our downfall. But, but we have trusted in your steadfast love, your unyielding love, your abiding love, your unstoppable love. Our hearts shall rejoice in your salvation because you have rescued us. We will sing to the Lord because you have dealt bountifully with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, we come to you during this hour, God. As we look around and as we are gathered here for this occasion. Lord, we thank you, God, that you have allowed us to be in this place. For we are standing for one reason. We're standing in unity, God. We're standing <coughs> to defeat divisiveness, God. Lord, we're asking now, as Second Peter verses 3 to 9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. God, we ask now that you look among us, God, that if there be anything within us, God, that is not pleasing to you, God, that you would allow us to repent right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Allow us to repent as a nation, God. Allow us to repent as corporately, God. Allow us to repent, repent as individuals, Lord. God, it is your will that all things be done and that none should perish. Not one life should perish, God. So, Lord, we thank you, God, and we pray now, God, that as we continue to deal with this pandemic, as we continue to deal with racial divide, division, God, that you would raise your hand of justice, Lord, that all would see, God, that you are one God. Lord, that we are one people, the Christian family, and we stand united together, God. Lord, let us not look at the color of our skin, but let us look at the content of our character. Let us look at the way that you have gathered us here, that you have assembled us here, that you have allowed us to accept your son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. So we thank you, God, that as this one church rallies together, that your name would be glorified, that you would be edified, God, that the gospel message would go forward, God, that if there be any of us that harbor anything or ill will towards each other or one another, that you would help us and that you would remove it right now in the name of Jesus. God, you know our hearts better than anyone. You know our thoughts better than anyone because you created us, God. So now, God, we repent in the mighty name of Jesus for anything that goes against your will and your people. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, let's continue to pray. We're praying for a revival 
in America. Let's pray. God, it's a reality that um, we are in rebellion, and some of us, we are in worst case. We are dead in our trespasses and sin. So we pray specifically according to Psalm 19, verse 7. We know that the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Your word has a, a divine capacity to revive the soul, to awaken the soul, to make the soul alive. So we pray this specifically, that your word would go forth through your people, through your churches, through your missionaries, through your sent ones all around America. And that your word would go forth and, and cause dead souls to become alive. Father, we pray for a spiritual awakening. Um, I know this country, by your kindness and grace, has had two great awakenings. God, we pray for one more, a third great awakening. God, we pray, Lord, that <clears throat> on the other side, God, we, we look to your holy word. Now we also trust that your Holy Spirit would move forth. Lord, that you would send forth your spirit in such a way that it would um, cause people to be regenerated. Lord, that we would be born again by your word, that you would grant us new hearts that would worship you, that would treasure you above all else. Help us to see and understand what's going on in this world and the church. We do not need our ears to be tickled. We don't need spiritual junk food. We need you and you alone to satisfy, to awaken, to revive, to satisfy the, the the longing in our heart. Father, we, may we choose, may we choose to be humble. Lord, that we would seek your face. Help us not to be arrogant and seek what we want. Turn, help us to turn from our wicked ways. And Lord, that you would forgive us and that you would heal this land. And Father, lastly, from Hosea 6-2, there's a season where in two days um, you revived us, and the third day you restored us. May we, may we know your, your presence. I think we live as if there, there is no God, that you do not exist. God, wake us up from our slumber. Wake us up from our apathy. Lord, awaken us to you the living God. We do not serve a dead God. We look and we see that the grave is empty. God, it's, it's a miracle um, that the grave is empty and you are alive. And because you're alive, we have every reason to live. We have every reason to fight the good fight. We have every reason to go from maintenance mode to mission mode. We have every reason to find um, our hope and strength in you and you alone. May our lives be ever more rooted in you. And we trust you to bear the fruit that's unique to you, that we would resemble um, and display your son as individuals, as a local church, as a city together, and as a nation together. Lord, revive us. In Christ's name we pray. Well, we know that many have uh, asked, how do we help get to know the pain and the struggles that people of color or people of a different background may face? So we thought to foster compassion and understanding that it would be good to hear from perhaps a different perspective than maybe you have heard. So today we're going to have a, a brief testimony from Sister Tracy Johnson, who serves as a deaconess at my church, Mount Zion. Following her, we're going to have a prayer for unity in the church by Pastor Maurice Wright from New Dimensions Fellowship Church in Durham. Then we're going to have a prayer for justice by Pastor Larry Snead, Brother Christ First Christian Fellowship Center in Raleigh. And then a prayer for our local and national leaders from Pastor Jim Folk of the Trinity Community Church in Cary. So this time we're asking to Let's 
There are some things that I can say to black students that other white teachers cannot get away with. For example, I can ask a black boy to pull up his pants or a black girl not to be so loud in the hallway, of course in a motherly way. But if someone asks these same students these same questions, they may feel like they're being singled out because they're black. As a counselor, I sometimes see the differences of experiences and exposure among different races and cultures causing academic achievement gaps to increase or widen. The simple things of reading a book at night or going on extravagant vacations. After my son's experience, I was reminded in Acts 10, 34, and 35, God shows no partiality. I'm going to say that one more time. God shows no partiality. But in every nation, everyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. I constantly reassure my children to be confident in who you are, respect yourself enough to walk away from anything that no longer serves you, grows you, or makes you happy. As a family, we live by that quote. We have to learn to face what we can't control and leave everything else to Jesus. Thank you so much. Uh, see what y'all didn't know is that short people have an extra 30 seconds to pray. <laughs> I want to take this time to do what the Lord told me to do and I want everybody to say COVID. COVID. Everybody say COVID. COVID. Normally people would frown at that word, but today at this prayer rally, it takes on new meaning. COVID now means coming out victoriously in diversity. I want somebody to clap their hands. We're coming out victoriously in diversity. United we stand and together we pray. I want to make this a very unique moment because when I saw the paper that I was supposed to be praying about unity and is what this prayer rally is all about, we want to bombard heaven and touch heaven, even though we're not able to touch each other as much in a very unique way. We want to do this as one. So in solidarity and in unity, while I pray this prayer, I want everyone to hold up one finger, just like this, all over this place. And if you will participate in this, this means that you know that amazing things can happen when we unite on and with one accord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we approach the throne of grace boldly. We need you now more than ever, ever before. You said in your word in Matthew 6 and 8 that you know what things we have need of even before we ask. So we, before we ask of you anything this morning, we pause to say thank you. Thank you for being a God who never ceases to amaze us and how well you provide for your people. You do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. This morning as believers, we sound the alarm, God, that you are the one who is able to unite your people as one. Everybody say as one. God is the great equalizer. And as of this very moment, Lord, I pray that you will knit our hearts together in love. Everybody say, as one. Lord, help us to speak the same thing. Let there be no divisions among us. But let us be perfectly drawn together in the same mindset and in the same purpose. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For where there is unity, there is strength. Father, we thank you today that you will strengthen us to stay connected to one another through the power of community, unity, and fellowship. Everybody say, as one. Lord, please give us, everybody under the sound of my voice, more and more victories because we support one another as one. 
We believe in one another as one. We love one another as one. We pray for one another as one. Lord, I ask that you open the eyes of our hearts and, be, and let us be able to see clearly and receive your, your power, your instruction. Help us to move marvelously forward in the spirit of unity, harmony, integrity, and cooperation. Help us to take our focus off of every negative situation and without distraction, help us to keep our eyes and our minds stayed on you. You will keep us in perfect peace. Thank you, God, for being an incredible God who always finds a way to save us, to rescue us, to show us a better plan, to fulfill promises in our lives, and to unite us as one. So as I end this prayer this morning, you said in your word that when we decree a thing, it shall be established unto us. So we decree and declare that there shall be more unity in our homes, more unity in our community, more unity on our jobs, more unity in our churches, more unity in our schools, more unity in our friendships, more unity in our fellowships, more unity in our denomination, more unity in our city, more unity in our town, more unity in our state, more unity in our nation, and more unity in the world. Father, we know that when you answer this prayer, you may say one or three things. If your answer is yes, we thank you for another victory. If your answer is no, we wait for your divine protection. And if your answer is wait, then we thank you for spiritual renewal. Because they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So Lord, while we wait on the answer to this prayer, help everyone under the sound of my voice to be bold enough to continue to be prayerful, powerful, and positive. Everybody say, as one. And if you believe in the power of this prayer, in Jesus' name, everybody say, amen. Clap your hands one good time. As one. We're one. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap. I'm praying out here this morning. I'm so glad this is not a funeral this morning. Amen. We're very much alive in the Lord on today. Amen. Very much unified. Amen. In the presence of our God. Amen. I, I wanted to just quickly say this. Whether the world likes it or not, this is what heaven's going to look like. Amen. amen. Whether the world likes it or not, this is what heaven is going to look like. And what I'm even more excited about is we've got enough people out here because you don't need but a handful of people, amen, to cause a shift in the nation. we got enough people out here this morning through our prayers, amen, to cause a shift in the nation, amen. And I don't know about you, but that's something to be excited about. And if people stand around wondering, can I make a difference? Is there anything I can do? Well, yes, you can do something. You're here today. And what you're here today, you can take with you from this place, amen, back to your location. And the Bible reminds us that God inhabits the praise of his people. And so we're grateful today for all of you who are here, for all of you who have given God the praise that he so duly deserves. As we get ready to get into our prayer for justice on today, many of us have witnessed injustice in our land. Many of us have witnessed this on TV. Not only that, as I asked my three-year-old grandson, what does he know about George Floyd, and they've already talked about that even as a three-year-old. So we witness injustice, and we need to pray. We need to come together as people of God and pray for this nation. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, there is a concern for justice in our world today. Uh, however, Lord, help us, Lord, that uh, in order for us to achieve the uh, justice for the world, we must better understand your divine plan. What is your will for justice? And as Christians, as we're gathered here today, God, our uh, own one accord, uh, uh, we need to be reminded that we, uh, as Christians, as believers in you, as your children, should stand against injustice. 
can love others with our words and with our actions. Inaction means that we don't care. So help us, Lord, to be reminded that we must open our mouths. We have, God, what we need today from you, all the power that we need. We can have peace in this world knowing, God, that you will prevail over evil. And you, God, you alone will deal with the evil in this world. The scriptures remind us that uh, you are a just God uh, uh, who will judge injustice and the wrongs because you love justice. As the prophet Isaiah 61, 8 reminds us. And oh God, see the hearts and the minds of men. We know that you do. We know that you will judge all men. And so our prayer today is to help us, God. Help us as a people. Help us as a nation. To be reminded of the scripture. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17 reminds us, Lord, to learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. And please the widow's call. We pray, God, that we enact these things. Help us to be reminded of Michael chapter 6, the verse 8 that says, He has told you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. And I'm reminded of Amos. And even Martin Luther King makes this amen something that we all remember as well. Amos chapter 5 verse 24 help us to be reminded God to let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 15 oh God help us to be reminded when justice is done it brings joy to the righteous but terror to the evil doers. And as we wrap up the prayer God Psalms 106 verse 3 says, blessed are those who keep justice, and he who does righteousness all the time. And God, when do we want justice? We want it today. When do we want justice? We want it right now. When do we want justice for all our children, God? For all our future generations to come? Let it begin with me. Let it begin with your people standing here today, God. And we will no longer keep our mouths closed when we see injustice. But God, that we will open up our minds and we will remind people of your goodness and how you love justice. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. As we pray for our local and national leaders, I want to encourage you to do one thing after you leave today, and that is Send one of your leaders a note and let them know that uh, that you're praying for them. And that will encourage them. We have some representatives here from the town of Apex, uh, uh, Cheryl and Nicole. And uh, we want to thank them for their service. And uh, we want to definitely uh, just lift them up in prayer along with our other leaders. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you are the one who alone defines justice and righteousness. Your word says that when the righteous increase, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people groan. You tell us that all authority that is established has been established by you and that we are to honor our governing authority. You call us, Lord, to pray for all those in high positions that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. We know, Lord, that all those in leadership positions, in government, in education, in universities, and in churches will answer to you, Lord, and you alone. Therefore, we pray for our local and national leaders. We pray for Harold Weinbrecht, the mayor of Cary. We pray for Jacques Gilbert, the mayor of Apex, Marianne Baldwin, the mayor of Raleigh, and Governor Roy Cooper. We thank you, Lord, that you have put these people in positions of leadership during this season, as difficult as it is. We pray that you grant them attitudes of humility and a servant's heart so that they can truly make decisions for the benefit of those they govern. We pray that you would give them your wisdom and your insight into difficult decisions. We pray that you would give them an awareness of the needs of the people whom they serve 
and that they would not serve themselves. We pray for the protection for their families and for the protection of all family members of those serving in local governance and legislature, state legislature, and the U.S. House and the U.S. Senate. We pray for those leaders that you would use them towards your purposes and your sovereign plan. Lord, we pray fervently now for the elections coming up this fall. You know, Lord, already, you know who will be in those positions. And we pray that each city and town would be able to conduct elections peacefully. We pray that people would not be dissuaded from voting because of COVID. We pray, Father, that you would now prepare the hearts of those who will take positions of leadership in the legislature, in the courts, and in the White House. We pray that you would give them eyes of compassion, minds of discernment, tongues that would speak truth, and hearts that would truly serve God and not money. Father, we live in a broken world where man-made systems of election and governance show the evidence of sin and corruption. But we ask that by your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit, you would work to redeem these institutions and change leaders' hearts so that all people in our communities are treated equally with dignity and respect. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope everyone is enjoying our time as we enter into the final part of our agenda. We know that with all the protests that are going on, many times people begin to look at our police as the enemy, which is unfortunate. That there are some who, because of the sin in their hearts, will, will exhibit racism no matter what office they hold. But yet, there are others who are serving diligently, serving their community, and putting their lives on the line. I've had the honor of working with our Cary Police Department to help build bridges between the African American community and the police for the last several years. And that has opened my eyes to the fact that being a police officer is not easy. And we have some great men and women who are serving our community. And so today we want to pray for them. And we have officers here representing from our Apex and Cary Police Department. So we're going to ask that they would come uh, make their way up front just to stand up here. We want to pray. Uh, for them. So we're going to have a prayer for our communities and the police by Pastor Norm Pierce from Grace Bible Fellowship in Cary. Following Pastor Norm will be a prayer for our Christ-centered hope and evangelism during our current national unrest. And that will be from Pastor Daniel Baker from Sovereign Grace Church of Apex. And once Pastor uh, Baker is finished, uh, we'll have closing gospel remarks by Pastor Warren Harvey, who is pastor here and ambassador of Presbyterian Church. I want to thank you for your presence here today. We want to thank you for your service. And we want to pray for you and for all you represent every person that works within each of these departments and the departments that are around us. So let's gather together. Let's join together in praying. Heavenly Father, you've made it clear in your word. Romans chapter 13 and verse 1 tells us, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. There's no power but of God, and the powers that be are ordained of God. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for the unison, for the great plan, organization, and structure that you have put around us that allows us to live freely, allows us to live in a state of tranquility, allows us to give us an opportunity to live out what it means to be free in a world that's messed up and sinful. You have also set up, Lord, in such a distorted setup that there be those who would stand against injustice, injustice, unrighteousness. And Father, we pray, we pray as a community that you would allow us to take your word, even as we see items on the news that go counter to that, even as we see situations that would stand against that, even as we hear of circumstances where the numbers don't match up, 
And Father, we see in some cases a community that is police, while another one is being benefited from the police. Father, we pray that we might be those who will pray for those who are in positions of authority, those who are given the responsibility to guide and to watch and to make sure that justice is meted out. Father, we pray for our community. We would be people in our own homes who will daily pray for our officers. Lord, especially in a time where they are undergoing challenges, where they are receiving looks that should never be given, where there are good officers, Lord, putting themselves in harm's way and yet being questioned. Father, we pray that we would be those who will cry out for our officers in each one of these areas around us, Father, in Raleigh, in Durham, in Cary, in Apex, in Holly Springs, and on and on. And we pray nationally, Father, that decisions would be made that will continue the training, the policies, so that policing will be done in such a way that these fine officers will be able to accomplish what we need, again, to live out the life you have for us. But Father, we also pray for these officers because we know that they come from homes. We know that they are a part of our community. We know that they have dreams and desires. We know that they give their lives and put their lives in harm's way every day. And so we pray for these officers, Lord, that you would bless them. We pray, Father, that you would protect them. We pray every time they step to a car, every time they're in a, a circumstance where they would make, they must make decisions in, in a flashing of a second, Father, in seconds, that you will give them the right choices to be made. That, Father, you will protect them, that you would guide them, that their training will win over, even in those times, Lord, where they are uncertain. And then, Father, we pray that you would protect them to bring them home once more to the wives and the husbands and the loved ones who stand around them. We pray, Almighty God, for their hearts as well, that you would comfort them, reminding them that their loved ones are putting themselves in harm's way for a reason, and that there is a community that is appreciative of it. And so, Father, we pray that we as your people will stand and pray for them, we pray, Lord, for those who are in positions and should not be, though. We know there are those few. We know those, there are those who walk and act according to ways that are biased. We know there are those who would allow their, them, their own biasness to stand in the way of doing the offices you have mandated to me. And so we pray, Lord, that you would remove those from us for their positions. We pray, Lord Jesus, that they would not be uh, besmirch the name, that they would not tear down the roles of those who've given, who continue to give, and who protect us. So Father, we praise you and thank you for the unison, the agreement you put us into context to live out of community and police relations. Help us each, Father, to do what part you would have us to play. And Father, we pray so much that you will guide and protect, and especially in this area, that we, we would live out the reality of who you say we are to be that others might see your perfect design. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks for hearing our prayers, as you always do. And Lord, we do gather in historical times. We hear so often, look, these are historical times. Times of confusion and chaos in our households, in our, even in our own hearts and minds. There's just confusion and chaos. And we feel that, Lord. We look around and we see righteous indignation over what's happening. And we also see sinful lawlessness. There's just adversity around us, Lord, in our finances, in our jobs. In our churches, Lord, there's adversity as churches struggle with how to respond to COVID and even the unrest in our nation. And yet, Lord, amidst all of this hurricane of unrest, Lord, we know that there is an anchor that hasn't moved. You, our anchor, have not moved. You are moving now, and you will not move, and you will never move. You cannot move. You are the foundation that is rock solid, never to be changed. But we look at Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth 
gives way, and it feels that feels that, that way at times, where like it, the earth itself is just giving way beneath us, or that the mountains above us are falling into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, still, Lord, you are our refuge, never to be shaken, never to be moved, never to be changed. Lord, may our, our hope and our faith be fixed on you. And yet, Lord, we would ask for even more than that, more than steadfast faith. We would ask for the gospel to go forth in these strange times. We're reminded of Acts 8, when a great persecution arose and the church in Jerusalem was scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. And Lord, we haven't been scattered away from our homes. We've actually been scattered to our homes. So we pray that just as that church was scattered and went about preaching the word that we would go about preaching the word as well. We pray that you would make us preachers in our households, and that's where we are. Preachers on our computers and our Zoom meetings that we have. That you make us preachers in our stores, our restaurants, as we go and wear, we wear our masks and try to be safe. We still pray that you would open our mouths, Lord, as preachers. And we, we just pray that in your own mysterious way that even these hard times would be times where the gospel is advancing. That people who weren't broken before would be broken now. People who didn't have ears to hear before would have ears to hear now. People who just didn't get it, didn't get the gospel before would get it now. They would recognize that this life isn't the end and this life isn't enough. They need more. They need grace. They need forgiveness. They need the Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord, may your gospel go forth. And it's in his name. Jesus, the risen King, who triumphed and is triumphing and will ultimately triumph over all his enemies. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. What a glorious time to gather. Brothers and sisters, we're able to do what we are doing here today for one reason. And that's because Jesus Christ did what he did on the cross for you and me. The Bible says we are able to come into the holy place to enter into the presence of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. He's opened the way that we can gather here as his people to pray and know that we have a heavenly father who hears and who works through the prayers of his children. It hasn't always been like that. And we were reminded earlier with, by Pastor Harris of what... Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, puts it very bluntly as possible, the condition we are in apart from Christ, apart from God. Every one of us is dead in our sins. Every one of us is a skilled lawbreaker and protester against the supreme authority. Every one of us stands guilty and condemned before God for sin that was passed down to us from our common ancestor, Adam. And it's been at work in us every day since we took our first breath. The Bible says that we are all born on death row. And we're sentenced to hell. But here's what God did. And I want you to listen to this from Ephesians chapter 2. God who is rich in mercy. Because of the great love with which he loved us. Even while we were his enemies. He made us alive together in Christ. And he has raised us up and he has seated us together with him in the heavenly places. Friends, that is good news. Because Jesus died in my place, I no longer bear that sentence of death upon my head. Because Jesus bore my sin on the cross, I'm now declared not guilty before a just and holy God. Because Jesus was forsaken on the cross for me, I now live reconciled and at peace with God. Because Jesus rose from the grave, I now live free and forgiven and forever with God and His kingdom. And that is true for every single one of you who are in Christ and for whom He came to die on the cross. In Christ, listen to what Paul says, we are chosen as His beloved. We are redeemed by His blood. We are forgiven. Every sin we could have done or do or will do, He's 
lavished on us wisdom and insight, and He has an inheritance in store for us that can never be taken away or remain forever. But here's even greater news. God did all of that. Not because of anything good in me or in you. Not because any of us deserve it. Not because of the place we were born. Not because of the family we were born into. Not because of the color of your skin or the country we come from or the culture that we were raised in. Not because of the commandments we keep or the conditions of our lifestyle. None of that. It's by grace. It's by grace alone that we are saved. God grace. It's a gift. It's a gift of God that comes only by faith. We embrace that gift. We receive it by believing that Jesus is who He says He is. The sinless Son of God. The Redeemer. By believing that He did what the Scriptures and what the, the eyewitnesses in the Gospel testified to. That He died and was buried and He rose again from the dead. And is now seated at God's right hand ruling over all things. By believing that your only hope, my only hope for this life and the next is found in trusting your life, trusting your soul to Jesus as Savior and King. I just want to ask you, is that why you're here today? Some of you may have come here this morning thinking you were just coming to a religious gathering, thinking you were coming maybe to even a political rally or a, a peaceful protest of some kind. You didn't realize that you were coming to a family meeting, to a family gathering. As followers of Christ, we're not here to, to create some kind of unity amidst all of our diversity, because Jesus has already done that. We are united to Him, and we are united to one another as brothers and sisters, not by virtue of what we do or don't do, but by what Jesus Christ has done. And the question is, will we live like it? Will we live like it? As Pastor Harris said earlier, Paul goes on to say about Jews and Gentiles, the most segregated and divided groups of Jesus' day. He says, for Jesus himself is our peace. He has made us one. He has broken down the wall of hostility in his flesh. He has made two divided, separate peoples into one new man, making peace that he might reconcile us to God both in one body. That's the church. Through the cross. And he killed the hostility. Wouldn't we love to see that happen in our world today? The hostility is put to death. Friends, that's, what true, that's what's true of us here today. We are members of God's household. And there's only one hope for the division, for the, the racism, for the hostility, the conflict we see in our land, we see around the world. And so I ask you, are you a member of that household? Have you embraced the gift of God, the love that He gives and the life He offers through Jesus Christ? Well, if not, if you're here today, and that's true of you, today's the day to join the family receive all the rights and privileges and blessings as a child of the king as God's sons and daughters pretty simple God says repent of your sin believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved you will be welcomed and adopted as his child don't wait for that and if that's true of you today which I'm sure it's true of most of us here we have much to rejoice over we are called to live as one family. Jesus prayed for our unity. That by our unity in Him, people would see and know that God had sent His Son. So let's have that witness, not just here this morning, but as we go forth from this place. After this, you'll have some time to fellowship. Go up and meet somebody you haven't met before. Go up and speak to somebody that uh, maybe you wouldn't normally go over to and speak to if you saw them walking down the street. Get to know them. Let's see if going from this place here, we can experience that unity even more among our congregations, among the body of Christ. Let's pray together. Lord God, we praise you for this day. Help us to live out the unity, the peace, 
the love which you have for, have for us and that you have called us to have for one another. Father, that unity, that peace, that love which led your Son to give his life as a ransom for us. And Father, if there are those here who are still apart from you, who are without hope in this world, Lord, would you pour out your Spirit in their hearts even now. Grant them the gift of repentance and faith in you. Bring them into the kingdom and into your family. And Father, as we go from this place, I pray that we would go strengthened and encouraged for the journey that you have given us in this life, a journey in which we are just aliens and strangers and sojourners as we, as we journey towards our true, the true city which you have for us, which is heaven. Father, help us to journey well together, to love one another, to stand in union on the foundation of the gospel. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now as we go from this place together, let's go with the blessing of God. May the love of God the Father and may the grace of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit for which we have been brought together be yours now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Just one reminder, please, as we are uh, fellowshipping and leaving, we do have cars that will be coming through the parking lot. Parents, please watch your children. Uh, drivers, please uh, make sure when you're backing up, when you're pulling out, that you're careful with those around. So, thank you for being here today.